Hello everyone. I just want to take a moment to mention there's a scam been going around YouTube recently. As you know, I answer all comments personally, but lately it's been reported to me by a couple of people that they got a response from a bot pretending to be me, pretending that I have a prize for you on something called Telegram. Please, whatever you do, do not click on the Telegram thing, whatever that is. Now, enjoy the show. I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. This is an antique writing slope. It's funny, I used to call them lap desks, but the term slope makes a lot more sense. Uh, they were, weren't used in your lap necessarily, they were used on tabletops. Open this up to provide a comfortable surface on which to write. They still make writing slopes today, not as boxes, but just as a slant board. I'm calling this Regency period. It's rosewood veneer and ebony and brass inlay, very characteristic of that period, the first few decades of the 19th century. This uh, scroll work on top might indicate that it's later in that period. This box has uh, missing and loose veneer and also missing brass inlay. There were a lot of pieces in the box. These pieces uh, clearly came from the box. Some of them are uh, easily identifiable. These pieces were inside the box and these are components that make up the little compartments found in writing slopes, but they don't go to this one. And this uh, is something else altogether. So I want to remove these pieces, then glue down whatever's loose, and at the same time be searching for where these pieces go. Boy, I'm not sure if these are going to come out of here. This blade fits, but the handle's too small. I'm going to grind a larger screwdriver uh, with a better handle. You know what? I'm going to leave these here. This all seems good, all this uh, banding. I really would have liked to have gotten this off in order to glue this strip, but uh, and, and everything else. I'll just have to deal with it. They used a toothing plane to put a uh, grooves in this. You see that on the back of some veneer. I'm not positive it's a great idea, but it's neat to see. I'll be using hide glue on this job. Uh, it's easy to use and compatible with the old glue. These don't need to be cleaned perfectly, but you want to get the big chunks off.
don't really need a piece of tape, but I want to remember where that was. Now that you can tell. Oh yeah, I had noticed this too when I was working on this piece. Well, that's good for today. I'll let this dry overnight. I was at the vet this morning. I'm on my own. So now I can begin gluing down these uh, pieces that came with it. I'll also find some more loose spots along the way. But I need to determine uh, exactly what veneer I'm going to use for my new pieces. Okay, I've got a 
quite a bit of different types of rosewood here. Uh, Brazilian, I've marked these in the past when I've learned them. This is Honduran. This darker portion reminds me of what I see in the box. Let's look in the other box. Okay, this one I've marked, East Indian. This other might be Honduras. Some antique rosewood must have come off of the piece. This one I marked Brazilian. It doesn't look anything like this picture of Brazilian in the article. Here's some other rosewood I had that maybe this is Brazilian. And of course you have tulip wood. I also have in here uh, ebony, African blackwood. So here's a piece from the box itself. And uh, this piece is actually a little dark. Most of the veneer on the box is lighter. But that's the grain. It's easy to eliminate some right off the bat. I like this. This is what I've marked as Honduran. If I could find that straighter grain pattern in some of this. Now this is most likely East Indian and I like that and that's likely what they would have used at that time. I'm kind of liking this but I'm worried that it could be too dark. This is where that piece goes. This is stuff I've chosen. Most of the veneers kind of bleached out. It's all over the place really. Well I think this is going to be my veneer. I will, uh, in a lot of areas where it goes are dark. I might uh, just for the heck of it uh, bleach a little bit of this and just see what it looks like. I hate bleaching wood. I don't even know if it'll work on rosewood. We'll see. Now back to the box. I can see that that's a kind of rounded over end. Oh wow. First try. That one. I'll glue it later. Well, I've got six pieces here that make up banding like this. I think I better figure out where they go uh, before I do anything else. This, like this one's really, really dark, so it may go in the back there. Boy, I'm liking that one. It's not perfect, but boy, the color's right. I noticed that this piece had rounded over corner there, and I like the way it fits. I think that's good. I think the finish and color difference could be that this came off a long time ago and it's been inside the box for a while. I'm liking the way that these fit too. And uh, it doesn't seem like there's any other place for them to go. And missing that piece.
Okay, I'll let this dry overnight. Okay, let's uh, let's see what we got here. The last remaining uh, existing piece that I have to glue on is this one, which is going to be difficult. The core of this wood is thin, three eighths of an inch or nine and a half milliliters. This is extending beyond it. This is the veneer that's on top. So you know, originally the edge was veneered first, then the top over it. But that, that fits flush, so I can make a little bit of a wider strip. And i got to work around these hinges, too. This is the fabric that you see on the other side of this board when you open the lid. And I've cut some pieces of cardboard. I want to slip them in there between. I don't want glue to get down underneath that fabric. Um, this will dry overnight, but I can get back to uh, prepping that veneer that I bleached. Okay, as you might expect, this uh, bleached area looks pretty weird. I'm going to sand it a bit with some uh, 150 paper. Well, as I've sanded it, it looks better. Let's see. Obviously, it doesn't look anything like that. But... Can we get from here to there? Let's try something. Let's try some medium brown walnut dye stain. Of all the stains that I use, of all the staining that I do in the shop, seven, at minimum 75% of it is with this medium brown walnut ultra stain. This small jar I keep handy has been thinned uh, a minimum of 50%. Hmm. Hmm. I'm liking the looks of that. I might even uh, thin it out a little more. Yeah, it's a little too dark. That's good. Even though the stain is going to need some adjustment, I've seen enough to know that I can work with this bleach veneer, that I can get it to uh, match. There's a lot of different colors going on anyway, but this will work. That's just a, maybe a little bit less than 13 millimeters. I'll call, I'll cut my strips at uh, 14 millimeters. Who 
knows, this might just be uh, crazy enough to work. Well, i got to wait until tomorrow to take the clamps off, and then we can start gluing this down. All right, let's uh, see what we got here. Oh, yeah, that piece went down really well. Thank goodness. My new veneer is not as thick as the old veneer, so I'll just double it up.
Okay, we'll let this dry overnight. Okay, let's uh, let's see what we got here. Ah, there's a problem here. This didn't get pulled down to where it was supposed to be. Lost a little piece right there. I should have done that when I glued it down the first time. Well, this gives me a chance to start working on the brass. The first step is to clean all this glue and dirt out of here. I think I'll use some hot water. I'm just going to stuff a rag in there to try to keep water out of the lock. I'm not going to remove this lock and send it out for repair. It seems to really be working. So there's a couple things I got to do when I make the next one. Number one, uh, don't cut it, at, don't mark it out the end of the piece of stock, but uh, somewhere in the middle, I've got to allow myself some brass to hang on to when I'm sawing it. Secondly, I've got to figure out a better way to mark it. The up and down action of the saw was uh, disrupting the tape I had on here. So while I'm thinking about all that, I can get back to my uh, 
veneer repairs. So I've trimmed off the edges and now I'm looking for any spaces that need to be filled. For instance, I can see a little space behind that piece of veneer. And also, I see a space here, I think. I'll continue around, uh, checking all my patches. And when the putty's dried, I'll sand the putty and sand the new patches with a little 150. And then I'll pretty quickly switch to 220. I've got to sand my new wood pretty well. With the, once again, I'm still working with 150. Uh, because it's so, the grain was raised so much from the bleach treatments. And then I've got to sand, you know, where the new wood and the old wood meets. So i got to make sure that's smooth. And once I'm satisfied with the 150, I'll use 220. And when you're using 220, it's okay to go against the grain like this, especially in these situations of, uh, of banding. I'm sanding, you know, these surfaces also with 220, but it doesn't seem to change the color much. I'll give it a little check here. Yeah, no, it looks good. Areas like this, I, there's no new wood here, but I re-glued a bunch of this veneer right here. And uh, so I like to sand that too, just lightly. S just smooth the rough edges a little bit and getting it ready to be polished. Now here comes the scary part. I want to stain my new veneer there. So I'm using Mohawk Ultra Stain, medium brown walnut, thinned out two to one, maybe even more thinner. It's soluble with alcohol, so I have a towel and some alcohol ready too. Let's try it. Let that dry for a bit. And after it dries and flashes off a bit, you can go back in and add. Okay, it's dried. I want to put a coat of shellac on this whole piece and see what the new piece looks like. Okay, this is the new piece right there. It looks good. It needs a little more color, but I can put the uh, ultra stain on over the shellac needs a little bit more redness. Luckily there's a tremendous amount of uh, variation in the colors. I'm going to go ahead and stain the, the rest of these patches and get a coat on this top edge. Although my stain uh, is not red enough, that's good. I can go back later and add a little red to it. The worst thing that can happen is that your stain be too red. Now I'm waiting for the stain to dry so I can put another coat of shellac on this top edge. I'll turn my attention to the lid and uh, again the escutcheon and I want to uh, show you my idea. So my idea was if I could darken the brass maybe I could mark it. I went online and, and saw that you could darken brass with uh, salt and vinegar. So I mixed up a little salt and vinegar in here. Uh, it's only been a few hours. And it, does, it is having an effect. The effect isn't great, but it made me think, I mean, it's only been a few hours, but it made me think that maybe this brass is lacquered or something, because it is so shiny. It's been around forever. I'm going to scrub down the piece of brass uh, with lacquer thinner uh, to remove any coating that's on there.
Well, bottom line is, if I can't mark this piece of brass accurately, I can't really make it out of brass. And of course, I was thinking brass was good. We don't know what the discussion was. The discussion also could have been made out of either uh, ebony or rosewood. And I'm kind of leaning towards rosewood because my new rosewood will look, you know, a little different than these and uh, it'll show up where the ebony might, will just blend right into this banding. Uh, so I think I'll go with rosewood. Maybe I'll run the grain vertically. That'll give a little contrast. And I think instead of, uh, I think I'll still use this veneer, which is too thin. I'll have to do two layers. But that gives me two chances to cut out that shape. So off camera, I took a single piece of veneer, tried it out in the saw, and sure enough, it didn't work because even though the veneer is taped, it split all out in the back. I then took some scraps and realized that I needed three layers of veneer to get the right thickness. And that gave me an idea. I'm going to laminate three pieces of veneer together with the middle piece, the grain running perpendicular. And then I'm going to seal the whole, the whole thing with hide glue. And so hopefully then I'll have a, a rigid piece of wood that I can actually saw successfully for this discussion. Okay, let's, uh, let's see what we got. I'm wearing gloves because the humidity is down to 26% and it's killing my hands. This is still kind of damp, so I'm going to put it up on points, let it dry a bit. Then I'm going to sand it and coat both sides with hide glue. Okay, this is dried for a few hours. It's nice and dry. I'm going to sand it smooth and then give it both sides a really good coat of hide glue. So what I'm trying to do here is saturate this whole lamination of rosewood so that it doesn't splinter when I cut it. While I've been struggling with the escutcheon, I have been working on the box all this banding around the top edge, I have put three coats of shellac on, sanding well between coats. My goal is to fill the grain in on my uh, new pieces of rosewood veneer. My new pieces definitely need more red, but I've been waiting to get the grain filled in before I tone them with an aerosol toner. And now I'll give it a quick tape off. I'm using Mohawk Brown Mahogany Toner. Not bad, but I won't know for sure until I put finish on the uh, entire area. So now while this is drying, uh, time for a third attempt at the escutcheon. So I've sanded both sides of my lamination. It's nice and smooth. I'll go ahead and make a transfer, just like I did uh, before. Okay, so far so good. I've got to uh, use maybe a small file, some sandpaper, and see if I can just go around and make the, the micro adjustments to get it fit. Okay, I think I'm ready to glue this down. I couldn't get the lock off, so I'm just going to stuff tape in there, keep glue from getting in there. Uh, 
Okay, let this dry overnight. Okay, let's uh, see what we've got. Well, let me get the glue off there. I won't be able to tell. It's not bad. I won't know for sure till I sand this. It's, it's a little bit above the surface. I thought I had it the right thickness or better, but I've got to sand that, bring that down a little bit. I can see there's some gaps in places, which is not surprising. I'll fill those. Before I go any further, I need to get this piece of brass in here. It's easy to find the brass you need for any project. Your local hardware store will have a display. Uh, artisan craftsman supply, or I get go to Granger's, and you can get any size of bar stock or flat stock that you need, and the right thickness too. I'm going to use five minute epoxy to secure that brass. I'm ready to fill the little gaps over here, and I'm going to fill that too. I'm going to use a, a epoxy putty. With epoxy putty, I can really minimize the amount of sanding I need to do uh, as long as I level it off uh, before it hardens. I'm going to add a little bit of dry powder stain to my epoxy putty. Uh, this is brown mahogany. <clears throat> I want to try to bring it close to that rosewood. It's critical to watch your time. You don't want to let this stuff harden on you. You can put water on your knife to help smooth it out. Hit the timer again when you keep an eye on that as it gets just to the right consistency you test it that needs to be a little bit harder another minute might still need another minute it can be helpful to dip your uh, chisel in water also and then you can take a scotch bright pad in water and scrub away a lot of the excess. So this piece of brass got shined up a little bit, matches the new piece now. I'm going to go over all this brass uh, just lightly with some 4 aught steel wool. Okay, brass is looking good. Now I'm going to cut this little brass, just the keyhole, into my rosewood discussion here. Okay, I think I've got this uh, escutcheon about as good as I can get it. I'm anxious to give this the first coat of uh, lubricite and see what it looks like. Everything's looking good, but I'm going to brush shellac on this escutcheon I made. I need to, uh, it's too grainy. I need to build up the finish to even it out with the rest of the lid. In the meantime, after I sprayed the aerosol color on my patches, I've applied two coats of shellac with a brush. Now I'm going to sand that with 800 paper and then polish it with the lubricite.
Uh, before I go any further, I want to put a new felt on the bottom. The final step will be to go over this with the uh, Gilboa's wax. Well, there you have it. A nice uh, Regency writing slope. It came in in pretty rough shape, but uh, it just needed some veneer repairs and uh, cleaned and polished up. I think it looks pretty good. I've got about uh, 10 hours in this job. I'm not including the time I spent trying to fabricate a brass discussion plate. I used the band saw, the drill press, the scroll saw, and these hand tools. If you like my videos, please like and share, and feel free to repost them on other sites like Reddit or Facebook or Twitter.